This is going to be your guide for the best tips and tricks in Animal Crossing New Horizons. Now I just want to straight get into this one, so if you appreciate that, don't forget to leave a like on the video, share it with your friends, but the first thing I want to talk about is one of the most important things to know about Animal Crossing, and it has to do with mining. So as you play through the game, you'll eventually end up with a shovel, and what happens is, when you hit a rock, you are immediately put on a timer. So how fast you can hit this rock in the short amount of time that you have determines how many items that you get. I was not expecting the money rock. That was supposed to come later in the guide, but we'll talk about that as well. So you can also get 15,000 bells by max hitting the money rock and on your item or on your island, one of the rocks will become a money rock. So instead of getting dirt, iron, gold, clay, you'll get money. And if you do it properly, you get that much money. So what you want to do is set up holes behind you. By doing this, it makes it to where when you hit a rock, you don't get knocked back. Because that's normally what happens, and it can hurt your productivity when doing mining. So you can just set that up. You can also put furniture there if you don't want just ugly holes. But the rocks don't move, so you can just kind of set it up for yourself, and then you can make it to where you can always just run to a rock, get situated, and then you're ready to mine. But this is what it would normally look like. You know, if you hit a rock, you hit it again... You hit it again, eventually it'll just stop producing items, and there we go. So we, we were lazy about it, like I said, maybe we were on a different side, maybe we kept getting knocked away. You know, unless you have something bracing you for the rock, it's pretty much impossible to get all nine of the items since you have to mash the A button to get it. So if you want more of the potential money or just the items that you get from mining, this is the best way of going about it. So you'll see people doing that. It's a classic strategy for Animal Crossing, but it's very necessary because you need iron to upgrade your tools. So you get more iron, you get more money this way. That's just a good way to start off this video. Now, sticking to the theme of money, every day there'll also be a shining spot on the ground that will spawn somewhere in your item. And when you dig it up, you get money. But this is when you don't want to be greedy. If you actually bury bells in this hole, you'll get three times the return when the tree grows up because it will become a money tree. So instead of having fruit, there'll be money bags there. And each money bag will be worth the amount that you put in. So you could just drop that 1,000 back in, or you could get really fancy with it and you can drop 10,000 in. So you can click on your bells pouch and that will pull out the amount. So we can just kind of uh, put these away. So that gives us our 1,000, and then we have the 10,000 we just put out, and we bury that in the hole. And that's going to give us some good return. So yeah, you just leave that tree there, you check up on it every once in a while, and eventually it's going to grow into a money tree. I know I had like a few of those, like this is my next money tree I'm waiting on for it to grow, but that's what we can do. Uh, some people, they just put the 1,000 back in, but you can pull money out of your wallet and then put it into your inventory, and that's what you want to do to get the most money out of a money tree. Tip number three, getting more Nook Miles. So Nook Miles are pretty straightforward depending on what state of the game you are. I've already talked about having a shovel and upgraded tools. If you aren't that far in the game, I recommend checking out my beginner's guide that in about an hour you can get the tool ring, you can get the house, and that's going to set you up with a lot of other perks. That you unlock this once you purchase a house, and this is Nook Miles Plus, and these are repeatable tasks. So it seems pretty simple. You grow a fruit tree. 100 Nook Miles, and then when you complete one of these, you just get replaced with another one. So you should just be trying to do as many of these as possible, and plan your day around them. So I mean, it's that simple. I took a photo, I don't have to make a pretty photo, the game doesn't care, it just wants me to take a photo, and because of that, I'm claiming the extra Nook Miles, and because it was the first one of the day, it gives me double miles as well, so then you can just talk to your neighbors, do whatever. But those aren't the only way of getting Nook Miles because you just have standard achievements, and these are definitely something to pay attention to because the payout on them is hundreds of Nook Miles, and some of them are pretty straightforward, and others you'll just kind of stumble into. So here we have Pay Dirt. I bet you didn't think you'd find buried bells here, hmm. But he this is an island after all, buried treasure and whatnot. Enjoy some Nook Miles from Nook Inc. to celebrate your discovery. So that was from big digging up the thousand bells, you get couple hundred nook miles for that same thing for when you fully mine out a rock and get all the resources that that's a thing too and then we have fun with fences so just pay attention and try to use this to get as many nook miles because nook miles are op now when you get a lot of nook miles you can start unlocking massive upgrades for your game so we have this the pretty good tools recipe for 3,000 nook miles it sounds like a lot 
but it's worth it because that's how you start getting the iron tools which take a very long time to break down and then that means more resources for more crafting for more miles or for more upgrades and then progressing through the game you can also get the tool ring for 800 nook miles and when they say it's essential they mean it so you want to go for that and then you can choose between the pocket organization or the pretty good tools recipes because you kind of need both at the same time it feels depending on how your mileage input is coming because if you get the good tools well that means you can get more resources in a shorter amount of time to get more miles and then that will give you the extra 5,000 miles that you need for the pocket organization but you're going to be getting more resources with the good tools so your pockets fill up faster it's it's kind of tricky and you'll just kind of have to determine which one is best for yourself i ended up getting the pocket upgrade last it wasn't too difficult i made it work but it was annoying and then just the quality of life of having that extra pocket slot is unbelievable. This brings us to some other cheeky things that you can do to optimize your Nook miles. So there's some tasks that require you to place or pick up items, and we have it down here, exterior decorator. So if you place 10 items outside, you end up getting just like a free couple hundred Nook miles. And then this also works with these ones, picking mushrooms. So if you have a mushroom in, in your inventory, you can place it down, so you drop it, and then you pick it back up, and that's going to give us progress towards our little Nook Miles thing that we have going on. So if you see that one, it's effectively free Nook Miles. Same thing works with the exterior decorator and anything that you can place outside. So if you have any kind of piece of furniture, you pick it up, you place it down, you do that 10 times, and then you're going to get the free Nook Miles for that. So there's a lot of like nifty little things you can do to just kind of cheese the game and get some extra Nook Miles pretty quick. But by doing this, I'm now going to speed it up. So we're getting our Nook Miles and then we're going to get a new task, which means more Nook Miles. And it's pretty, pretty free, pretty simple like that. And one of the biggest things about New Horizons is being able to change the island and shape the terrain. Well, you need Nook Miles for that. So it costs 6,000 Nook Miles to get the Waterscaping Permit and the Cliff Construction Permit, as well as building some other stuff. Also, if you need a recipe for different kinds of fences, any kind of clothing or extra little bits, that's going to help out as well. So Nook Miles are going to be very integral, even after you've bought the first couple of things, because when you progress further through the game, you're still going to need to spend them to get some really good items that will then unlock more inside the game. So at every opportunity you have, my advice is to get nook miles pay attention to that prioritize these another tip that i have is to keep an eye out for gulliver since he gives you really good rewards now something that's kind of funny is that he can appear on the title screen if he's washed up on your island and it actually makes it a lot easier for him to locate it so the water's on the right which means i need to go to an east facing beach and then i can find him there now you should also just be looking around while you're gathering shells to sell for bells and if you find him, it's worth interacting and doing his little mini game. So if you haven't done the little Gulliver thing, I'm going to show you guys how to do that right now. And there's our guy. So you can talk to him to wake him up, but you have to kind of bother him a little bit because he's like, oh, hey, what's going on? Give me, no, don't wake me. He, he's a little grouchy after being just abandoned by the sea or something. So now you can see that there's little bits of water shooting up. So normally you can do this to get clams and then you turn those clams into bait. But after talking to Gulliver, these will then activate and actually be the items that he needs. So he'll give you a story, a little bit of text that you have to get through. But then you can go and dig up the components he's looking for. So as you can see, little bits of water things and we find the communicator parts that we are looking for. So you just have to run around the beaches until you find all five of them. Sometimes you can find the clams, but for the most part, it doesn't really take that long to identify and then get the communicator parts. Yeah, I ended up with quite a lot of resources from just a beach run. Got some shells, a new recipe for message in a bottle, a couple of the clams, and the clams actually can count towards a nook mileage task, which is really nice, but then you just get the five communicator parts and you are good to go, so talk to our man he'll be happy that you helped him out and then he'll send you something in the mail so check the mail and you will receive some furniture and i usually just flip the furniture and make a couple thousand bells 
My next tip is effectively going to be a mini island selection guide, or at least understanding your island if you've already committed to a save file and you don't want to restart, so at least you know what to do with the layout that you currently have. So the first thing and biggest thing that you need to know about an island is that there's always going to be two outlets for a river, and one of them will be to the south. So you can have south and west, south and east, and even south and south, but it's not going to go up to the north because you're just going to have a rock wall in your way. So this is going to be very important when determining the potential late game of how you want your island and potential city to look, because these little inlet areas, these cannot be built over. You can fill in everything else on the island. So after that, it just becomes about aesthetic. I think there's going to be a lot of people that just want to keep everything buried to the south, and then you're going to have a continuous piece of land to do whatever you want with over here. But it's going to make the game a bit weirder, because now you have these like kind of useless little patches over here, so you can start filling it in and then things start getting obtrusive. You will have to add extra townsfolk to start growing into that late game. So it could be difficult to find a place, you know, outside of this that doesn't get too cluttered and then still leave like enough natural area to forage, plant trees, get extra resources that way. But also you can just visit other islands. So maybe you can just kind of sacrifice your island in the early game and then play for the late game while you farm other islands and stuff. There's a lot of different play styles that you can go about. So there's going to be a lot of weird decisions. Also, there's always going to be a fishing pier somewhere, as well as a little peninsula of grass that you can't really do anything about either. So if you don't like one that's like ugly and kind of in the middle of the map, you might have to reset your save until you get a selection of four maps that has the one that you're looking for. There's also going to be like some unavoidable rocks and even a hidden beach in the back. So if you want one that's centered, that might be something to pay attention to. One off to the corner. It's going to be like little design things, but even though you can construct, you know, tear down hills, build up, waterfalls and move around rivers and lakes and stuff there's still going to be some permanent fixtures that you're going to have to work around and some decisions of your map will be better for the late game and worse for the early game or better for the early game and worse for the late game so that's going to be something you have to keep in mind also when it comes to level dark green is level one this is going to be level two on the lighter green and then level three and then when you want to get to level two or three you're going to have to use a ladder which is unlocked earlier on so you can see how much unusable space is is going to be a part of your island and then how you're going to have to work around that so i don't think there's really any terrible island layouts from what i've seen but there are some ones that are pretty messy like this bottom right one i don't really like at all so i ended up going with the top right and this was just the first one i saw i didn't reset my game i just dealt with the I, you know i just picked the best one with the hand i was dealt so far i'm liking it i was able to put my two initial villagers over here got the museum over here put my extra three villagers over here and that leaves me with a lot of room for my house the shop personal space and then over here I just do all my foraging you can set up a farm or something and then there's still good resources to gather up in these higher areas after I unlock the ladder and then everything else just kind of works out like I don't know if I'm going to regret having this little inlet or the placement of this south inlet or anything like that but overall it's still pretty solid for me another thing to note about all of these is that there will be forks in the river so it means that pretty much no matter what's happening also the river will run into higher ground as well you're not going to have any kind of continuous way if you want to get from one side of the map or cover every little bit of the map you will have to make two lake jumps no matter what so if we look at the map i picked pretty much all of my main areas are going to be accessible like there's this little fourth little spot over there but it doesn't take up any room i don't even think i visited it yet in like 10 hours of gameplay or anything so i've got three main areas this one's kind of messy that's that's kind of big for a fourth area that kind of gets in the way and because of this river you can't cross over any of this hill area so that's kind of a mess but then these look pretty nice one two three one two three so even then this would pretty this would be a good idea but there's also a lot of hills that kind of get in the way so if you want to deal with that, it works. But then there's a good amount of space if it wasn't for that lake. So you can still build around that one, plan around it. Like I said, not really too many terrible designs. But you kind of have to like plan how you're going to hop around the island, how you're going to grab resources, how you're going to fish, how you're just going to explore. Now I think this next tip is more going to be for Animal Crossing fans since they tend to play a bit more reserved. But what I've learned is that this is a crafting game, which means you need to YOLO. The more aggro you are, the more you are rewarded. And that also means, like I said, don't sell any wood. Don't sell anything that can make any recipe in this game because you will need it. That these little houses down here, look at that. That's a pump. That pump requires iron. That log, that's not a tree stump. 
that's a log stool that I made, and you need that to build the house. So if you're trying to like get later into the game, you need to accompany the townsfolk. I haven't like fully upgraded the city yet, so I don't know how many resources that's going to need, but imagining it's going to be a lot. So you need all kinds of wood. You need hardwood. You need softwood. You need regular wood. You might notice there's a lot of stumps around. That's because I'm going to worry about that later, and I think it's going to be better to do it that way. That if I can get all my resources now, and I can catapult into the later game by just being crazy and reckless, then I can, I'll have like quality of life improvements that will then make fixing all of these problems easier. Like if I want to tear down this mountain or build it up or create like my perfect town in the end game, yeah, the, those stumps aren't going to matter. I'm going to eventually chop down the tree and dig it up, so I'd rather do it sooner instead of later and then have the resources at hand because you're going to need to be crafting nonstop and you're just... Just don't worry. You know, look at all these trees. I've I've made decent progress. I've chopped down tons of trees. I've pretty much pillaged my island to a decent degree. But also, if you're ever, like, in a pinch with resources, you can just visit a different island. You know, you can pay the 2,000 nook miles, get a ticket, go to a deserted island, and then that ticket's going to give you those extra resources, and then that's going to get you even further into the game. So, like I said, be reckless, yellow it out, you will appreciate it. You will be rewarded for just getting and hoarding every item that you can get. And the last piece of advice I have is that if you're ever lost, talk to the boss. Tom Nook is everything about your progression in this game. You talk to him, you do what he says, and that is how you progress. And that's kind of like the beauty and strangeness of Animal Crossing, that you can do whatever you want, however you want, at whatever pace, there's no task log, there's no like hard time limits, you're just on a chill island building your perfect village, but if you if you like forget what he said or you get lost or you know you just don't know how to make it any further into the game, Tom Nook will tell you what to do. So yeah, ready for customization workshop, do the workshop, alright, and then that's going to unlock you with another recipe, that's going to give you another task. It, it happens like very early on in the game where it's like, hey, give me five creatures. You give them five creatures, that turns into Blathers. Blathers then gives you the pole, which lets you explore more of your island. It also gives you the shovel, which gives you iron so you can get the better tools. So that's pretty much it. Like, just do whatever Tom Nook says, and that's going to be, be the way you get through. But you can do it at your own pace. I don't want to worry about a customization workshop right now. I'm going to get a couple more miles. I'm going to get a couple more bells. And then I can get to the in-game, post-game, late-game, whatever, you know, when I want to. So that's another piece of the advice is that play this game however you want to play it because it's Animal Crossing. But you can still get away with some optimization, min-max, and cheeky little gamer things. So if you guys enjoy the video. Hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching. Oh, I guess talk to villagers if they call out. You know, if you're nice to villagers, they give you cool things. Like, bro, that public bench is worth 8,000. That's insane. Thank you, Sherry. And that gave me Nook Miles. So yeah, that's just, that's just how progression in this game works. You do things, and then you just get constant dopamine, and then when you want to progress, you can progress.